money always goes where it's treated best. I mean, don't you as a person go where you're treated best? If, if you go to a resort, a hotel, a restaurant, a business, you go where they treat you the best, hopefully, right? So does your money. Your money goes where it's treated best. In California, among other states, New York, Washington, Oregon, you know, many others, has no respect for your money. Hey, it's Jason Hartman. Since it seems to be popular to pick on my former home state, I figured I would do it too and share my story as to why leaving California was one of the best decisions of my entire life. We're going to talk about the business climate. We're going to talk about the culture. We're going to talk about taxation. We're going to talk about all of those important things that affect so many of our lives. Lifestyle, not, not the least of which, uh, lifestyle in general, and a lot of these things just add up to lifestyle. So there is no shortage of people talking about moving out of California. I want you to understand something. This also applies to any place that has a similar climate. No, I don't mean weather. I mean a governmental climate, a cultural climate. So everything I say about California probably applies just as well to New York or many other areas that are becoming less and less desirable. You know, as, as we look at California, it was a major part of the culture of not only the entire country, but the entire world. California had Hollywood, right? And Hollywood was, was the media that we all consumed. In addition to Hollywood, the movie industry, the TV industry, it had the music industry. <laughs> so, you know, music, movies, television, I mean, that influenced the entire planet. The whole human race was influenced by what came out of Southern California, where I lived for the vast majority of my life. Now, what I want you to understand is that a lot of places and a lot of businesses and a lot of people are sort of riding on a reputation that was well-deserved at one point, that was earned at one point, but it's just no longer true. If you look at other places around the world, you know, I was born in Europe, and whenever I go back to Europe, every time I go, I usually go a couple of times a year, I think this place just keeps getting less and less desirable than it used to be. And, and it's really true. You know, Europe, a couple of hundred years ago, was the center of culture and arts and civilization in so many ways. I mean, not ancient civilization, of course, there's Egypt and everything else, but forget about that. <laughs> I'm just trying to make a point. You know, the Renaissance really came out of Europe, right? And a lot of of great stuff came out of California in the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, and even up until the 80s. And after that, it really all started to change very dramatically. So whether you remember California as that cute girl Gidget or the Mickey Mouse Club and, and Disney or more recently, you know, 90210 or Melrose Place, Beverly Hills 90210, or even more recently than that, Baywatch or the movie Grease or the Beach Boys, you know, all of this great stuff that influenced culture, not only around the country, but also around the world. That is not the same California we have today. And it hasn't been that way for really a couple of decades. But it takes a long time for people to change their plans, to change their location, to change their businesses, to change their decisions, their perceptions of a place. And really, they do need to change. And hopefully, this video will, will help you understand some of that stuff and why you might want to make a different decision. If you live in New York, if you live in California, it might be time to move. So of course, high taxes. This is no secret to anybody. We all know that California, New York, and many other places around the country and around the world, the governments are getting desperate and they are looking to tax everything that moves. <laughs> and then they, of course, have high cost of living, mostly determined by the cost of real estate in these areas. But in general, 
everything is expensive because when the real estate is expensive, that influences the price of virtually everything else because every business operates in or on real estate. And when real estate's expensive, they pass that cost through to the customers. A very intrusive government. And if we have time, you know, I can give you some examples about that. I, I ran a few different businesses in California and the government just became progressively more and more intrusive and it was not pleasant. Lack of entertainment. When real estate gets expensive, when regulations get heavy, when government gets intrusive, when when taxes get high, there's just a lack of new entertainment options. They're just not building anything. They're not building many new restaurants. They're not building many new concert venues or movie theaters or whatever, right? They're just not having as many events because there are so many permits. There are so many regulations. There are so many hassles to do this stuff. Cultural isolation. Well, it's no secret that California, you know, I remember seeing Leslie Appleton Young, who I've interviewed on my podcast and YouTube channel. She was the, or still is, the chief economist for the California Association of Realtors, a very powerful trade group in the state of California. And I remember back in the late 90s, seeing her give a speech about California and what was going on there and how the economy was going to be, how the real estate market was going to be. And she said, I would tell everybody here to go learn another language, but I can't tell you which one to learn because in California, you have 29 <laughs> major languages that are spoken. And, you know, language is a cultural barrier, not only customs and other things, but language, just language alone. When you go into stores, coffee shops, wherever you go in California, people are speaking a whole variety of languages, which is kind of interesting on one hand, but it's isolating on another hand, if you don't speak that language. And that's why when, you know, in any country, when we see certain expats and immigrant groups, they all kind of stick together, right? Because they feel more comfortable with people who share their customs and speak their language. And I certainly understand that. If I lived in a foreign country and, you know, I didn't speak the mainstream language of that country, I would find the expat community and, you know, hang out with people I knew and understood and shared common bonds with. But that's isolating as more and more of that changes in the cultural landscape. Draconian laws. Oh my gosh. California <laughs> and New York, probably the two leading countries in the United States for draconian laws. When you get a situation where the government just feels that they need to control everything. And remember, at the end of the day, a law always equals a fine that equals, if the fine is not paid, that equals imprisonment, right? That's what a law is. A law is a set of rules. You don't follow the rules, you pay a fine. You don't pay the fine, they come and knock on your door with guns and handcuffs and take away your freedom, right? That's what a law is. Every law boils down to that as the end result. And so the more and more laws a government makes. And, you know, every year on New Year's Day, we always hear, well, California has enacted 871 new laws this year. And last year they instituted 932. I'm just throwing out numbers, but those numbers are fairly accurate, actually. Hundreds of new laws every single year. How many laws get repealed? Almost none. <laughs> laws don't get repealed. They just keep adding new laws. And every law represents a tax collection opportunity for the government. Um, tied in with cultural isolation, diminishing social life. I found that a lot of my friends kept moving out of state because they just didn't want to put up with any of this stuff. The high taxes, the high cost of living, the draconian laws, the intrusive government, uh, the crowds, uh, you know, I didn't even mention traffic, right? <laughs> and, and, you know, just in general, California is very business unfriendly. And when businesses leave, the people leave. And that's almost always just the productive people leaving, not the people that are looking for a handout or looking for something for free. They stick around, right? Because California is a state that basically says, look, if you are not productive, come here 
and they are a magnet for this, and we will give you free stuff so we can buy your votes. That's the speech of any California politician, New York politician, and you know, left-leaning socialist politician. Okay, so this is a quote I came up with uh, a while back. When the government is broke, it becomes predatory on its citizens. And this is just true every time. You never want to live in a place where government is desperate. Because when government is desperate, they are going to find a way to squeeze money out of the remaining productive people and businesses. They just have to do that. They're broke and you do not want to live in, a, uh, in an environment where you have a poorly managed government because they always become predatory on the citizens. Joe Rogan, a famous podcaster, he left California and moved to Texas. You might have heard he had a big buyout of his show, and it's pretty interesting. Let's listen to what he has to say about it. I just want to go somewhere in the center of the country, yep. somewhere it's easier to travel to both places, and somewhere where you have a little bit more freedom. Also, I think that um, where we live right here in Los Angeles is overcrowded. And I think most of the time that's not a problem. But I think it's exposing the fact that it's a real issue when you look at the number of pieces, people that uh, uh, are catching COVID because of this overpopulation issue. Um, when you look at the traffic, when you look at the economic despair, when you look at the homelessness problem that's accelerated radically over the last uh, six, seven, ten years, I, I think there's too many people here. I think it's not tenable. I don't, I don't think it's manageable. And so that's well said. I mean, think about what Joe Rogan is saying, right? A friend of mine, as I was noticing the decline of California in the mid to late 90s, I saw a friend of mine, a well-known, very successful businessman who lived in Corona Del Mar, California, Newport Beach area. And I said to him, I said, hey, you know, what, what do you think's happening here? And he said, look, if, if you take a lot of rats and they're out in the open, they're fine. But if you make their environment smaller and smaller and more crowded, they're going to fight. And that's what's happening in places like California, New York. People are fighting for a limited supply of resources. And so with the overcrowding, the homelessness, you know, that we don't have to talk about the COVID thing too much, but the shutdowns and the draconian laws and things like that, uh, they're just absolutely crazy. So then Ben Shapiro, same story, right? Ben Shapiro, well-known media personality, high taxes, homelessness, crime, high cost of living. Let's listen to what he says. The city of Los Angeles deciding that they were going to cede the entire city to low-level criminality. They were not going to enforce the law. They were not going to keep the streets clean. They were not going to make it livable for me to allow my children to play outside of our front gate without adult supervision. Between them allowing the streets to become incredibly dirty and dangerous because Here's the reality. If I let my kids walk around the neighborhood, they will stumble across two open needles during the course of that walk because the city has specifically told law enforcement they can't do anything about the rampant homelessness problem that has plagued Los Angeles. There are 66,000 homeless people in L.A. County. Every single underpass in L.A. has entire living facilities for homeless people. This is not, by the way, sympathy to the homeless, many of whom really need serious help. They are drug addicted or mentally ill. And the city has decided that in the name of freedom, they are going to allow the suburbs to be overrun by this homelessness problem that does affect people who are paying their taxes. Okay, between that, between the fact that they've decided to defund the cops and move away from allowing the police to do their jobs entirely, between the increased taxes and the higher levels of crime and the lower levels of cleanliness, yeah. And, and, you know, he's absolutely right. I grew up in Los Angeles. Uh, I remember I used to go to school in Santa Monica. And uh, when I was a little kid, lived on Bundy Drive in Santa Monica, and then lived in different places in LA. And, you know, I go back there now. And it is unbelievable. There's just homeless people sleeping everywhere. There's no proper facilities for them. These places are disease ridden. You know, it, it's just awful. And yet, across the street, in this banana republic type environment, you have ultra wealthy people. It's just a mix that just simply doesn't work. It's really sad. Here's my old home, okay? This was my last home in Orange County, California, okay? And my total cost of this home was over $11,000 a month, okay? $11,000 a month. Now, I want you to see the comparison here. I left, I sold this property, and I moved to Arizona. 
And that was my first move 10 years ago. Okay. And I thought I won the lottery because here, here's the deal. This home was only, it was only like 1900 square feet. It wasn't very large. It had a nice big yard for the area and a view of the ocean in the distance and sunset and city lights. And, and that was nice, but the house itself was not very big. I bought it when it was brand new, I lived there for several years. And then I sold it $11,000 a month. Check out the comparison. When I moved to Arizona and I remember crossing the state line and thinking, as I saw that sign, my state income taxes just declined by 69% state income tax. Of course, the federal tax is the same. And Arizona is not a no income tax state. They do have tax there, but it's dramatically lower, 69%, in my case, lower than the Socialist Republic of California. And this is something I posted on Facebook in 2013. And I, I just noticed after I left, I was noticing more and more people leaving. And I was noticing the more successful they were, the more motivated they were to leave. So check this out. I'll, I'll just show you a comparison here, right? This is California. And when you look at your state income taxes, now these are for people who are doing, or, or this is for people who are doing pretty well, right? This is $600,000 a year in income. Now there are many people that are much, much richer than that. And you know why there aren't enough jobs in California, because these people tend to own the businesses and they're moving, they're getting out of the state. So Let's just compare it with $600,000 a year in adjusted gross income, okay? In California, their state tax is $53,000. In Arizona, $25,000. In Texas, or where I live now, Florida, or many other no-income tax states, it's zero. Zero! No state income tax. So you save yourself $53,000 a year by leaving California, New York is pretty close, so it's not that far off. So basically every single year, you can buy yourself a brand new, at the time, BMW 5 Series and pay cash and get a brand new car every year just because you aren't paying California state taxes. Now that doesn't include all the other cost of living. Let me show you the example. So here was my house in Arizona, the first place there, right? It was twice as large. It was $3,600 a month. I rented this. It was a penthouse apartment in the tallest all residential building in the entire state of California windows on three sides. I saw the sun set and I saw the sunrise every single day from one side of the house or the other. This is the sunrise when I'd wake up and I, I don't know if I have a picture of the sun. Oh, there's the sunset from my bedroom. Okay. So just absolutely incredible. Now compare that to $11,000 a month right? Just unbelievable. And I talked about the languages and, you know, here, just so you can see is a, a, I mean, when you look at a state of about 40 million people, look at the number of English speakers. It's only about half the state. Spanish is a, a fourth of the state. And then you've got all these other languages here, right? So this is part of that California shift that has occurred, right? Now, we looked at $600,000. Let's double that. Here, we look at California, Arizona, and no income tax states like Texas. $110,000 a year, $53,000 a year in Arizona, zero in the no income tax states. So you could literally buy a decent rental property and build a portfolio of rental properties every single year with cash. Not that I want you to do it that way, because you know, I teach inflation induced debt destruction, and I like you to finance it. But it's just an example of the tax difference. It's absolutely crazy. Now, one of the things that really helped the California real estate market and the California economy in general, was way back in 1978, there was a man named Howard Jarvis. And he pushed a thing called Proposition 13, and it passed. And it was a boon for Californians and California real estate. While Prop 13 is 
getting eaten or they're chipping away at it. Okay. It hasn't totally gone away yet, but a lot of it has, okay, in the last election, but it's going to get worse because as soon as, and I have noticed this, maybe you have too, as soon as there is a bill or a proposition or a referendum in government anywhere, as soon as that talk gets out there into the ether, right, into the environment, it's a slippery slope. It's a short time before ultimately it happens. Maybe it doesn't happen the first time around. Prop 13 is still partially, after the last election, partially in force in California, but part of it has has dissipated. They're chipping away at it, as I say. And as soon as the talk gets out there, though, you know it's only a slippery slope. They're going to chip away every election or every, you know, executive order or every time the assembly meets, they're going to chip away more and more at this stuff. And there are many, many end runs around the will of the people to do this. So this is going away. Mark my words. Yeah, it's a prediction. I could be wrong, but Prop 13 will ultimately just, it'll just evaporate. It'll vanish. The state is broke. They need the money. Okay. So in the last election, they chipped away at it. I don't think I need to go into the details. You probably already know this stuff. Okay. I had dinner in Austin, Texas with Tim Ferriss. You might recognize this guy at the end of the table. That's Tim Ferriss, the famous author. And he moved from Silicon Valley in Northern California to Austin, Texas. And I had dinner with him, literally a four hour dinner. I kid you not. Okay. Uh, uh, after he moved to Austin, Texas, he's the author of the four hour work week, the four hour body, the four hour chef. You probably know these books. They're, they're very well known best-selling books. He talked about how he left California, why he left California. You know, everybody just realizes at a certain point, it's just kind of overrated. It's riding on a reputation that was developed decades earlier, and it's just not the same. You know, here's another headline. California continually tries to chase away the wealthy. Tech exodus. California tech companies are leaving for Texas and not just Texas, other places. The mayor of Miami is doing a good job trying to attract uh, tech companies and a lot of tech talent into South Florida. And so things are changing. Do not miss this change in the tide. It's been going on for a while and it's only accelerating. A famous YouTuber, Graham, listen to what he says about leaving California. He just moved to Las Vegas. But once everything was shut down and both of us went entirely remote, there was the realization that we could work from pretty much anywhere and we don't have to be anchored to one specific city to lead a fulfilling and happy life. Not to mention on paper, I'm not oblivious to how much money I would be saving if I moved to a no income tax state like many have done before me. And that's now a number that's grown to the point where I can no longer ignore the cost benefit of moving. So there you go, right? And he cites high income taxes, high business taxes, crime rate increasing, homelessness, high cost of living, wildfires, air quality problems, too many regulations. You may be familiar with his work and there you go. Okay, so what about this one? This is a friend of mine. This is Mark Moss and he is also a famous YouTuber and he just moved from Orange County, California to Puerto Rico. Now, if you don't know about it, I've done some other shows on this. Puerto Rico has for US citizens the best tax deal in the world. I've considered moving there many times. Every time I go, I think about it again. Many of my friends have moved there, including Mark. However, I just don't like it well enough. So I figured I'll at least live in a no income tax state like Florida. Absolutely love Florida. But here's what he has to say. But then the income taxes, the income taxes for me were the straw that broke the camel's back. In California, we pay state income taxes. There are seven states in the nation that don't pay any income taxes, but in California we do, and that's 13.3%. 13% just to live in the state. On top of that, capital gains taxes are based off investment income. I've been a full-time investor for a long time, so a lot of my income comes that way. And in, in California, they don't give you a special tax rate for that. It's taxed just as ordinary income. Now, on top of that, in 2018, they, ch they changed the federal tax law to where I can't even write off my state taxes anymore. And then if that's not bad enough, 
They say by next year, they're raising the tax rates again up to 16.8%, almost 17% of my income just to stay in California. It's just not worth it anymore. That's what so many people are deciding. Can you imagine, in addition to paying federal tax, whatever that rate's going to be, and under the Biden administration, we're going to see that increase. He's he's made no bones about it. <laughs> Taxes are going up, and they're going up a lot. And then you pay 17% to the state. You know, you could easily end up paying 60, 65% of your income just in income taxes, not including all of the other taxes you pay, right? Property taxes, sales taxes, government fees for this, that, and the other thing. And then, you know, there have been studies on buying a loaf of bread, right? And it's taxed 200 times before you buy it, right? <laughs> all along the way, there are taxes. It's just absolutely crazy capital gains, okay? They want to tax capital gains as ordinary income. By the way, this is also going on at the federal level, okay? This screenshot is from the Franchise Tax Board, the California State Taxing Authority, which, by the way, is one of the most aggressive taxing authorities in the United States. They're absolutely incredible. <laughs> I mean, in a bad way, how, how aggressive they are on taxing people. But it's just getting beyond beyond the beyond, as the saying goes. Here's another example, yet again, right? California's growth rate at a record low as more people leave. Um, you know, officially, California added 21,000 people uh, in, in the year from July 19 to 2020. Um, but, but increasing the state's population by a paltry 0.05% right? Um, and uh, you saw people leaving. Now, I want to caution you when you see stats uh, like this, because they are very deceiving. The question is not the net number of people moving in and moving out. The important question is, who is moving in and moving out? That is the important question. Why? Because you want people moving in who are productive, who have money, who employ people, who are going to open businesses. And this, nothing could be further from this case in California. The people moving in do not typically have businesses. They do not typically employ people. They do not even typically pay taxes at all. Okay, and the people leaving are those people who employ people who pay taxes. The middle class is fleeing the Socialist Republic of California in record numbers. And that has been going on for quite a while. It has only accelerated with the pandemic. Okay, large companies leaving California. It's not just people, it's companies. Oracle, you all know about Oracle, Larry Ellison, the CEO, moving the headquarters to Austin. Palantir, that's Peter Thiel's company. He's probably the smartest guy in Silicon Valley. And he <laughs> left and moved his company to Denver. They recently went public. Hewlett Packard, they're one of the famous California success stories, you know, started in the garage in Silicon Valley and now moving their headquarters to Houston. Elon Musk personally moved to Texas and he's talking about moving Tesla and SpaceX. Okay, I mean, that would just be a huge blow. You, you wonder, why don't the people running California, why don't these crazy politicians there, why don't they get the hint? What is their problem? I mean, they just don't get it. It's like they're almost intentionally trying to ruin the state. Now, one of the things my company offers is an empowered investor network. It's like a social network for some of our investors that choose to become members of this, right? And one of them recently did a little anecdotal survey, and I, I taught them to do this, which is simply if you want to research migration trends, just go to the U-Haul website. You're all familiar with U-Haul truck rentals. Well, they're leaving Northern California, and they're moving to Boise, Idaho right? So Folsom is in Northern California, near Sacramento, and they wanted to rent a small trailer to start their move. And they noticed that renting this trailer from Folsom to Boise was $850. 
but renting the same trailer to go from Boise to Folsom because people are leaving California and U-Haul is having a hard time getting their vehicles back into California where there's a high demand to rent them for one-way moves to leave the state. It's only $99. So think about that. That's more than 800% price difference <laughs> going one direction or the other. That's absolutely insane. And if that doesn't tell you what is happening, if that is not a barometer, a litmus test for what is going on in California as people are fleeing the state, I don't know what else can. This is It's just absolutely shocking what's happening. Highest state income tax and they're planning to make it go even higher. Look at that, 13.3% at the highest uh, marginal rate. Minnesota, pretty darn high. New York, pretty darn high. But remember, it's not even just about income taxes. Oregon, very high too, of course. Uh, don't forget that. And South Carolina is not cheap, and neither is Iowa, right? Or Wisconsin's pretty high too, right? But it's not just about income taxes. It's also about other types of taxes and the overall cost of living. Oh, don't forget Hawaii down here at 11%, okay? It's easy to forget beautiful, gorgeous Hawaii. Great place to visit. So is California. I just wouldn't want to live there. <laughs> okay, so here's what other people are saying, why they're leaving. High taxes, strict lockdowns, goes back to my concept of draconian laws, expensive home prices, high cost of living, huge homelessness disaster, political culture, social unrest, same as civil unrest, right? Ability to work remotely. You can just work anywhere. Remember what Graham said on his video there of, you know, you just don't need to be in a certain location anymore. Poor air quality, traffic and overcrowding, wildfires, earthquakes, you know, the list just goes on and on. Now, <laughs> but wait, there's more as the saying goes. This proposed wealth tax is absolutely scary. Now, what is the difference here? Look, it's one thing to say, we're gonna tax your income, right? You're making money, you gotta give some to the government. Okay, fine, you know, we've all sort of made that deal and we've all agreed to it basically. Uh, not that we had a choice, but we're all doing it, right? At least most of us are there, or at least those of us who don't wanna go to jail, <laughs> okay? So, but the wealth tax is an entirely different concept. A wealth tax means that after you earned that money and you paid taxes all along the way, now you have that money in the bank, or you have it invested, you have it in a business, you have it in real estate properties, you have it in the stock market, whatever, right? It's now your wealth that you've created. You've probably spent a lifetime working for this money. California says, we wanna tax your wealth. We don't care if you paid income tax all along. If you paid income tax for the past 20, 30 years, we don't care. You have wealth. We wanna tax the wealth also. And they're proposing similar thing in Washington state where you have Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates and a few other super rich people, right? And this is going to chase them out of the state. Now, I don't think Bill Gates will leave, but I do think that Jeff Bezos will leave. We'll see, right? And a lot of these ultra rich people in California will really, really be incentivized to leave. And when they leave, they're gonna take their spending and they're gonna take their businesses and they're gonna take their wealth and they're gonna put it somewhere else. Remember one thing, folks, money always goes where it's treated best. I mean, don't you as a person go where you're treated best? If, if you go to a resort, a hotel, a restaurant, a business, you go where they treat you the best, hopefully, right? So does your money. Your money goes where it's treated best. In California, uh, among other states, New York, Washington, Oregon, you know, many others, has no respect for your money. They don't treat your money well. And this will cause people to leave. So here we go. Anybody who spends more than 60 days in the state in a single year could be susceptible to this proposed wealth tax of 0.4%.
Okay, now, right now, it's on people with a net worth in excess of $30 million. Uh, but, but, remember, it's always a slippery slope. Milton Friedman said, there is nothing so permanent as a temporary government program. And that also kind of speaks to the slippery slope idea too. Because I remember when they had the big earthquakes in San Francisco years ago. And they said, look, we've got to raise the California sales tax by a penny from 6% to 7% for just a year to help pay for rebuilding. And you know what? Everybody in the state was pretty much okay with that. They said, fine, you know, we understand, you know, we want to do our part. We feel bad for what happened. And, you know, if everybody pays an extra 1% for a year and it rebuilds the Bay Area, that's okay, right? Everybody agreed to do it. But guess what? The sales taxes now are much higher than that. It never went away. It never does. They'll start out saying, we're going to tax the, the ultra rich with $30 million net worths, but then it'll be $20 million net worths and then $10 million net worths. And you're all thinking, you know, some of you who don't have net worths like that are thinking, well, that doesn't matter to me. You know, those rich people eat the rich, but the rich are the people who employ people, okay? <laughs> and they're the people who are building things and developing land and creating jobs. Okay, fine. But then that wealth tax will drop and drop and drop. And they'll say, look, if, if you're worth a million dollars, which in California is not much at all, Okay, a million dollar net worth in the state of California with that cost of living is like nothing. All right. So this will be a slippery slope. It will happen. My prediction, it will happen. And it will be a slippery slope down to lower and lower amounts and increasing and increasing rates of taxation. Remember, a broke government, a mismanaged government always becomes predatory on the citizens. Now, if you want to learn more about my other concepts like inflation-induced debt destruction, how you can align your interest with these powerful forces, governments, and central banks, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check out the podcast, The Creating Wealth Show, the podcast. Go to jasonhartman.com to learn more and be sure to click the bell notification after you subscribe so you're notified when we do live streams and all of that great stuff. Anyway, thank you for listening. I hope this was helpful. And I hope if you are in one of these unfriendly states that is attacking your money, I hope you will make a good decision to move to a place that treats you and your money better. Anyway, thank you so much for listening and happy investing.